However, there are also so many people who exploit you. Let's just point it out, right? There's so many boot camps and that are completely useless, but you can find information that you can also find online. Hello there and welcome to another YouTube video here on my channel. Now, my name is Anais. If you're new here, welcome. Usually I make videos on Kubernetes, how to get started with Kubernetes to manage your containers such as your Docker containers. So if you're interested in containerization and Kubernetes, check out my other videos. Now, I got a lot of questions of where do I get started? What tools are useful? How do I get started? What do I actually have to learn? Now, I'm a developer advocate slash site reliability engineer, focusing more and more on the engineering part of my job. And uh, there are obviously different requirements within my job than within your job or within your computer science degree or similar, right? But I thought about some of the tools that I think are quite universal to every engineer could benefit or will benefit from actually learning those. So I just put them together on a blog post, the blog post link below, and I'm just going to quickly talk over it, just mentioning those different tools, right? So you can see over here is the draft of the blog post. And it's basically divided in what you should learn and how you should learn it. Now, let's focus on the first question first before diving actually into those tools. How should you learn something new, right? Uh, now, there are different ways that you can learn. You can buy books, you can search for online tutorials, you can dig through documentation, you can search for YouTube videos or similar, such as this one or my YouTube videos, right? My philosophy is that you can learn everything for free online. There's so many amazing open source maintainers, so many amazing people who share their knowledge for free on their blog posts. Obviously, it's, uh, it's always amazing if you financially support a content creator who's creating creating good, informative, uh, qualitative, uh, and knowledgeable content, right? Like I would love to have more subscribers, paid subscribers on my newsletter, right? Because I benefit from it and there's a lot of effort and work that goes into it. However, there are also so many people who exploit you. Let's just point it out, right? There's so many boot camps and that are completely useless, but you can find information that you can also find online. You just, if you find it by yourself online, if you spend the time learning based on resources for free, you will have to put a lot more effort into it, right? And I understand that people don't necessarily want to do that. They don't have the time to filter out information by themselves. But there are other people who try to filter out the information for you, especially developer advocates within the space. So if you want to learn about something, try to find developer advocates within that space. Try to find companies within the space because also men, like a lot of companies such as Siva, actually have free online learning resources that you can check out. We have the Sivo Academy where you can learn about Kubernetes. We have the Sivo DevOps Bootcamp on our YouTube channel, both linked below, where you can learn about DevOps for free. It's on our YouTube channel with live streams for free, where people are invited to share their knowledge with you. So you don't have to pay for overpriced DevOps bootcamps. You just, you just don't. There's no reason for it. Please don't. If pay for something, <laughs> pay for certification. Pay directly to content creators. Sponsor people on GitHub. That's where your money is really well invested, where people appreciate it, where people put a lot of effort into what they actually get out of it. Versus in bootcamps, it's you pay for the brand. You don't pay for the knowledge. Let's just point that out. I just want to put that out there. I don't believe in this high overpriced paid content. There's no need you have to pay for it. There's my philosophy is you can learn everything for free online. Also, I share free online learning resources weekly on my DevOps newsletter link below from amazing people from across the space right to your inbox on a weekly basis. So investing into those people that I highlight, for example, on a newsletter is a lot more important. It's a lot more beneficial for the space and it makes them so many more people more appreciated than you paying for overpriced boot camps. But, or pay for books. Books are also a good investment, really good investment. So what should you actually learn? What are the actual tools that you should learn about? So first of all, Bash, Bash scripting, being familiar with the command line, being able to navigate your space. So if this is my terminal, right, I want to be able to, um, um, well, right now I don't do a good job in it. CD documents, <laughs> documents. And then I can go into Terraform. I can list the directories here. I can remove directories. I can rename them. 
uh, and so on. So basically being familiar with, with that and also bash scripting to automate your tasks is really important. It will save you a lot of struggle in the long term and it will give you or will make your job a lot easier just on the go. Now you should or I would invest, I probably have to invest a bit more time in learning it and during an afternoon actually because it's nothing that you can easily learn on the go because you will just feel a lot of times like you're missing out on things. Versus with Git, Git is I think something that you can either learn in an afternoon or over a weekend or you can really try to learn it on the go by just googling of how to do X, how to do this and that, right? And there are amazing guides online on how to use Git. The main problem that I usually have is to SSH into like into my accounts with Git, especially if you if you have multiple accounts. So if you have good tutorials for that, please point that out. Now Git is the next one, and then have a good code editor such as VS Code. VS Code is highly regarded within the industry. Get familiar with it. It has a lot of lots of different plugins integrations that you can use. If you have a good code editor, if you're familiar with it and how to use it, if you can use it for also debugging your different resources, that will make you so much more productive. What a senior engineer told me just a few weeks ago is actually what's far more important is how you debug. Knowing how you can debug your applications is far more important than you actually knowing inside out a programming language. Now, then one of the next ones is actually pick a programming language. I will go into that in a second. Docker, containerization. The industry is moving towards containerization, whether that's, well, Docker containers, but Docker containers doesn't necessarily mean that you have to use Docker desktop um, and just containerization in general and then managing those containers through Kubernetes. That's where the career ladder, where the career opportunities, let's say, are moving towards, which is, yeah, it's fascinating and I highly suggest you to check it out, to be familiar with it. It shouldn't take you long. Docker is for me also something that I really learn on the go. I have spent at the beginning some time on sitting down and understanding what is actually a container. Now I try to learn a lot of things on the go just by Googling consistently. Keep Googling things, right? Picking a programming language. There is actually a personal story behind that. When I got started a few years ago, I mean, obviously, within my degree, I got started, or if you do a degree or a bootcamp, you're kind of subject to the programming language that's introduced within that degree. You cannot really modify, you cannot have much autonomy over what you use, right? But outside of it, I started learning first front-end development, HTML, CSS, Java, <laughs> JavaScript. Uh, and then from JavaScript, I moved into TypeScript and Node.js and did more of the backend stuff. And then I tried to learn Rust, felt miserable at it, wasn't much interested as well in it. And then I, I just used all kinds of tools and languages interchangeably a lot. and I didn't really manage to focus on one thing particularly. So now I'm trying to focus on Go and get better at it. And yeah, so I really suggest you to find a programming language that you like and that you can get really good at it. Obviously, you have to consider the career opportunities. There are a lot, a lot of front-end developers. If you want to stand out in front-end development, you have to do a lot to stand out, to be really good at it and to have a competitive edge, right? Versus uh, with Go, Go is adopted across the industry more and more, more and more companies are moving towards having their tooling, especially in the SRE DevOps site written in Go. So it just it, something like that will benefit you. Obviously there are different languages that you can learn over time that will benefit you depending on which area of the industry you're working within and which company you're working for. Now, the last thing is the ICT platforms. These are all really things that can benefit you independent of who you are. If you're SRE, if you're an engineer, if you want to work as an engineer, if you want to work as a DevOps engineer, as a cloud engineer, these tools will all really benefit you, right? To, to know a lot about. And please, if you have any other suggestions on tools that people should learn, comment those below. So the last one is the ICD platforms. You want to automate your tasks. You want to, if you're working within a team, you want to have standardized processes that are only really possible to have with the ICD pipelines. I highly suggest you to get started with GitHub Actions just because it's such a vast open source space where you have lots of plugins and tools that you can use out of the box with your repositories. I have my previous video on, one of my previous videos on GitHub Actions. So check that out if you're curious. Uh, but the ICD platforms, they are different different ones. There's Codefresh, Circle CI, GitHub Actions, GitLab CI, Jenkins. There are lots of different ones. I highly suggest you to get started with GitHub Actions and from there you can transfer a lot of the skills. 
Now, I hope this was useful. If it was, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Your support would mean a lot, a lot, a lot to me. I really hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.